first reader for the evening, uh, and there'll be three for those of you who didn't know that, is Joe Brundridge uh, slash Element 615. He's been a poet and spoken word artist in town here for many, many years. Um, he's the, been the director and is the director of the Austin International Poetry Festival, which is a weekend long event that takes place every April here in town. Um, four full days of poetry readings, events, workshops, um, panels, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, and it takes place all over town. So if you live, live up north, there's events up north, if you live down south. Anyways, he'll tell you more about it. He's been doing that for three years. Uh, he's also featured at East by Southeast, uh, multiple African American book festivals, and um, you're about to experience this, but he uh, has, he's just an amazing spoken word poet. He kind of echoes something between Coltrane and Cyrano. Uh, he's unapologetically romantic, uh, delightfully sensual, uh, and uh, really just de completely devoid of pretension. Like, please talk to Joe after this reading. He's a great guy to know. So, without any further ado, Joe Brunkridge. Clap if you're sitting next to someone beautiful. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> I live my life from paycheck to paycheck. So in exchange for all the services I render, I get the next day. It means you're barely able to pay them the bills. And no matter how many tomorrows I get, they go so fast that before my check comes, all my money is spent. And all I got left to show for it is a kitchen drawer full of yesterdays that I can do nothing with. I've applied for assistance, but you only get help sporadically. It prompts one to stop asking. I gave up on waiting for someone who breathes, someone who bleeds, someone who will fail just like I do. I gave up on waiting for someone else's life to guide me out. I um, have never been one for waiting anyway. I decided that since I'm on borrowed time, I better live this life now before someone comes back around asking for the money. I need to just live like the money is here. Instead of writing a check, I can't be sure I can cash because I'm still sore from the last time I found out I was wrong. So from now on, all bets off. Nothing is anything anymore. So if you need to know anything about me, then know this. I come from a place of not many, but few. I come from a place of no better than you, and that, that's the last part of this poem that will rhyme. I will no longer write to recreate what you see when you do take notice, because when I ask you and you tell me, I have no idea what you are talking about. From now on, I will live my life behind blue bars in a white cell just waiting to receive a temporary pardon. Better yet, some time out in the yard every time I push out a real piece. From now on, I am the third word in a sentence of 16, and I don't care if you forget me. Just do not let the thought perish. I will give a damn. Maybe keep some on me in case you need one. And if I find out I know more than you, then I will see to it that we are on even keel together before our time is done. And if I, I will no longer wait for someone to love me. Because when you think about it, you don't love yourself enough to be happy being alone. You've been cheating on yourself with everyone you thought you were giving your heart to. <laughs> and I'm done living my life as an adult. I will live my life as a slave to the idea of my own freedom, wearing the welts on my back with pride. So if you have to know anything about me, then look at yourself. There's some of me and all of you and vice versa. I'll pay what I owe for what I have done. When my time is now, when that check comes, I yes, that'll be in cash, not credit. Don't ask me for anything, anything other than nothing and maybe about five seconds from now because that was all that I had. Don't ask me about tomorrow or even further. I have no future. I've already lived it. And all that I got left, I've got the past and my Lord knows I've got enough trouble letting that go so I'll, out of all that I have left, what I have, what I know that I have is today. Today works. <laughs> My name is Joe Brundage, aka Element 615. I am a friend, a relative, an otherwise cool dude. <laughs> I advocate non creepy hugs. Just me, anybody else, non creepy hugs? Woo! Shout out to non creepy hugs in the building. Uh -huh. <laughs> First of all, give it up to our host this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for our host, please, and give it up for Malvern Books, please. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm very excited about our festival this year. I was going to run down the list 
of features that we have because we select them on an international, national, state, and local level. So internationally, we have Anna Yin and Deja Vu Tavari. On a national level, we have Margot Farrington and Susie Q. Smith. Um, statewide, we have Christopher Carmona, Carolyn Adams, um, Houston's own outspoken bean. And in Austin, we have Tova Charles, Zachary Caballero, Allison Whipple, and A.R. Rogers. No! <laughs> um, give it up for A.R. Rogers, please. <laughs> and it is my pleasure to announce before I read the next poem. Um, I can't go a day without saying it because I geek out every time. But it is my pleasure to announce that esteemed poet, writer, author, activist, whatever else it is she is and is going to be, um, the esteemed Nikki Giovanni will be our headliner at the festival. And we are very excited about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have flyers if you're interested, but I'm going to go ahead and read some more poems because that's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> So the other day, we're just sitting there, like two people often do. And we kind of stare at each other from time to time, only this time, her eyes are like boring right through me. They're looking at me, and they're like, so, are you available? And I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm yours. And since then, I've written your name on the walls of my mind, the halls of my heart, the ceilings of my soul, only to discover that I need more room. You see, without hesitation, she embraces me. She never once consumes wholeheartedly, taking on the responsibility of loving me with reciprocity because she knows that I need to be with someone that I can relay my thoughts and feelings with without fear that they will shun me because we're all in the same ship together, right? All the while in her own little boat, she sails a sea of love looking for the secluded islands in my mind, searching for somewhere to start her quest Although every time she sits next to me or even places her hand to my chest, I think she knows she's getting closer. And to give credit where credit is due, you are a secret worth keeping, if not a crime worth confessing. You're worth me being wrong. If you aren't right, either way, you're just a blessing. And for me to say that I love you strictly for your heart, your soul, and your mind would only be half the truth, a lie, and therefore unkind. I mean, I am sorry, but it ain't just your character. I mean, I don't know how you do it, how you set yourself apart, how you and your design redefine the very meaning of divine if you have perfected being you into an art as you act like you don't care that as I stare, you've got me gritting my teeth, shaking my head, and grabbing the air, but that is not the point. What I've been meaning to say is that I love you in so many ways that I love you that I've said it seven times a day, and that's when I've said it once. I will observe moments of silence for the fallen I love you that have died and have been reaching your ears, and I will make my words strong enough to carry you from moment to moment for all the days that I can't, and I'll interpolate them as subtext in between every little thing that I say. So when I tell you, we uh, had a peanut butter, I'm thanking you for not devouring my soul, even though I gladly feed it to you and allow you to wash it down with my spirit. And when I don't say anything, I'm really not saying anything. I tend to talk a lot, and I'm just giving you a break. <laughs> and when I tell you anything's wrong, I'm saying you made it right by being there. And when I tell you I don't know what I want, I'm saying I spent quite a bit of time inside of myself. I decided I'd step out for a moment to play, and I wouldn't mind if you joined me. I'm just saying, and now that I know that your eyes will never be the color of goodbye, I just need to thank you for loving me so soft and so brave. You've changed my skin back from stone. I am here by yours from my brown to my bone, and I would humbly suggest that we take the ever off layaway. Maybe not right away, but someday. I understand. Thank you. <laughs> So, let me see here. I was going to say something really poignant and clever to lead me <laughs> into the next poem. Um, and I forgot it because, number one, I have a new phone. And number two, um, I've started to become into the whole selfie thing. And I'm embracing that. And I was going to ask if I could take a selfie and all y'all like being in it. Is that cool? Yeah. Uh, all right. So, I'm going to, okay, I don't know. Okay, so let's flip it. You gotta flip it. You gotta flip it. Okay, I know what to do, robot. Shut up. <laughs> okay, so here it is. So everybody. Yeah, let me see. Every, okay, let me see if I get everybody. All right, I think that's everybody. All right, everybody say hi. 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 That's awesome. That happened. That's how I feel about it. All right. Okay.
Okay, so um, <clears throat> I'm going to do two more poems, and um, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for our featured Mancho this evening, please. Um, I have a I have a CD with some of my poems on it. It is available. I don't. I forget what the price is, but I can tell you that whatever it costs. If you purchase some product from our feature, because his words are that powerful, it magically reduces the price of my CD. <laughs> magically. Everybody say that. Magically. <laughs> so you believe, so it's going to work. OK. <clears throat> Tell yourself you can't. Tell yourself, not today. Say you're not able. You can't afford it. You're too hot. You're too cold. And no one else wants to. Why does it always have to be you? You don't feel right. This doesn't even feel right. I mean, they're going to say no, or they're going to say yes, or they won't say anything, and you will fail. You'll fail, and they'll laugh, and you'll die. You'll die right there. So just give yourself any reason to avoid or evade. Let's just cite every drawback, cop out. Tell yourself anything, and I mean anything, to help you believe you should do nothing, and say it loud enough for me to hear you. So I can call you a liar to your face. So I can grab you by your neck pull you from the muck and mire of your self-pity just to wash you with the waters of what I believe because I believe you should end. I think you should die. I feel your lives should cease so that you could live the life you've held on backwater like the shoe actually fit. You're not allergic to the light. You just don't want it on you. And I don't get it because that's all I've ever seen come out of you when your arms aren't folded. Let's acknowledge that you even have those arms. Quit complaining that you don't have the strength because if that was the truth, you wouldn't hold on to things like you do. You are not a prisoner. You're just a warden and a one-person jail. And what's worse, you are a workaholic. Wreak havoc on your hopelessness. Subtract it from the whole of you. Believe a little less in your doubts. You can't say that this is pointless if you won't pick your head up and look where it's pointing you. Scream, I love you. And a crowd loud enough for you to hear it and just revel in all of the nervous happiness. I think that's called glowing. Everything you wish you were, you just don't wish to realize it. Pass on the plates of outside opinion unless you can be fed without suffering from the indigestion of indecision. Turn why didn't I? And why didn't I sooner? Change I don't know from question the statement and quit whining unless you're trying to make someone laugh that by making yourself a superhero, accept your own friend request. <laughs> <laughs> and quit fighting unless you're just sparring for when you need to get it on with anyone. I mean anyone trying to knock you down. I ain't saying look for a fight. I'm saying, baby, don't run from it. Pretending it's not there doesn't mean it plays a long file. Be the devil into all those little demons of yours. <clears throat> Just because you created them don't mean they get an easy ride today. I will always be there, behind you, beside you, above you, waiting for all of those who love you, waiting for you to cut through the callus of your condition and call whatever crawls out your character to finally accept the truth that you won't hear as you adhere to your cherished fears that we are all amazing. That we are made of both his and each other's love. That we are both fearfully and wonderfully made. That we are made of stronger things. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so do we have, in, last poem, do we have any daughters in the building? <laughs> okay, so on the count of three, everybody say yeah. Daughters, one, two, three. Yay, daughters. That's right. She put that extra in. Yay, daughters. That's right. All right, so here we go. She will be what she already is. Beautiful little girl. Dream given form with sepia skin, soft as a pleasant thought, kissed by the sun before she was born because it couldn't wait to play with her. Counselor in her right eye, magic in the left, her eyes, her very own shade of brown, the very hue of wisdom. Whatever she's been dying to tell someone, she'll just look at you like she already knows. Cute little nose with an angel's ears, a smile not infectious and not infectious but vaccinating. Her very giggle will inoculate your soul from sadness. From her birth, there were only two types of people, those who love her and hate themselves. Self-honesty reveals either or. She will possess a heart that pumps resilience. Timeless soul with limitless imagination. She'll be happy to share, but bring it on, because it wouldn't be right for her to do it all by herself, although she probably could. 
Laughing, hugging, and crayons will range among her chief priorities. She'll try to color between the lines, but should she etch Beyonce bears, and that's just <coughs> what needed to happen. Nap time is something she will only do when necessary. Is there simply too much for her to do to waste time closing her eyes? She'll have a thing for applesauce. Applesauce will be important. <laughs> there will be days when applesauce will be all that stand between us and total annihilation. She will never hide unless it's her turn to, or the world just really got on her nerves that day. She'll avoid going crazy by not fighting it, laughing and dancing in the air as if they were the only partners suitable. She'll make a fine caretaker for every heart in her hands, though few will ever be worthy of hers. Loving her will be so very easy, but she can help you if respecting her proves difficult. She will find a woman in the mirror one day, and they will love each other forever. And her real beauty will be found in strength, sacrifice, resilience. Even the dreams she won't want to have will guide her. But some days, she'll just need to stop. Place her hands at her backside. She'll breathe. She'll keep going. This is what heroes do. You're a hero. You will always believe in magic, but there will be some days where you'll speak incantations like, Daddy and hear nothing back. You will look for the first man to ever love you with a space for him in your heart shaped like those vacant seats at your tea parties and some days I won't be there. Days you'll need help touching the sky and some days I won't be there. Lost butterfly kisses, wishes from birthdays, non-refundable. Daddy, daddy, how do I look? And some days I won't be there and you will still look for me within the crevices of your memory, saving me a place within possibility, but with or without my presence, you will keep it moving, dealing with factors as opposed to living with excuses because this is what women do. You will write out the pages of your own destiny, living within the key of your own song at the end of your day. There'll be a place outside where the sun can't wait to play with you. And the wind and the rain can't wait to dance with you. And there will be laughter and tears and applesauce. <laughs> you will be what you already are. It's just the beginning. Clap if you sit next to someone beautiful. <laughs>